Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to continue our monster battle system. In this video, we're going to step back from the battle logic, which we did last time, and look at step three, which is initialize the battle components. We skipped this last time because we needed to set up actually the battle logic first before we go into the initialize battle components because there was some stuff that we needed to put together. So let's get to it. After we do the setup UI, and before we drop down to the battle logic, we need to create another sequence here uh, between them called initialize battle components. When we go in here, we're calling initialize for both battle components on the enemy monster and the friendly monster. They do the same thing for each, except the target monster and the owning monster get swapped. So the target monster for the enemy monster is the friendly monster, and the owning monster for the enemy monster is the enemy monster and vice versa for the friendly monster. So let's take a look at what initialize does. All right, we're on a custom event here. This is on our BP battle component, and it takes in a target monster and an owning monster, both BP monster references, and the game, game mode battle, which is a reference to the BP game mode battle. We're going to promote each of those to variables and save them. We then come up here to an is valid check on the owning monster's AI controller. So if the owning monster has an AI controller, aka the enemy monster, then we're going to do some stuff. We grab the owning monster, we grab the monster stats off of it, and the monster stats off of that object reference. We break it. We're going to check if it's owned, and if it's not owned, we're going to go up to true. Currently, the boolean owned just means, is it the player's owned monster? This doesn't have anything to do with, have we caught that monster before? Is it owned by a enemy player, like Pokemon? We don't have that logic in place. Owned just means, is it the player's monster? If it is not the player's monster, and it's true, we come up here to AI selectability, followed by an AI enabled print string, and we're going to bind an event to the game mode battle's next turn. You can see here in the previous video, we created this event dispatcher on the game mode called next turn, and that's where we're using it now. We're going to bind to this next turn another custom event called AI selectability. This custom event is what we're calling right here as well. When it's called, we're going to set a timer for 1.5 seconds. This timer calls another event. This event is called AI run turn. Out of run turn, we're going to a branch. With this branch, we need to go back over here and grab the abilities array of the class references, get the length, and we're gonna pick a random integer in range off of it. So grab length and pass it into max and put one as the minimum. We're just gonna randomly choose an ability nothing fancy this branch is then going to check off the game mode battle the battle state if the battle state is the enemy's turn we're going to go into another event called run turn run turn takes in an integer for action choice which is passed from our random integer and then we're going to print a debug string ai chose ability so that we can see that this has occurred let's take a look at run turn this takes in our action choice integer we're going to promote that to a variable called ability number. We're going to start the turn, which is down here. We'll move, we'll go into that in a second. And then we're going to grab the game mode battle, grab the turn stack off the game mode battle, and we're gonna remove the owning monster from it because we've run through our turn. Following that, we're going to change turn and then call turn ended. Change turn is on the game mode battle. We built that last time. I can show it again. This is the function change turn. We made this last time. It just swaps the player turn for the enemy turn and the enemy turn for the player turn. That's all we're doing right now. Now let's take a look at start turn. Start turn is another custom event. Owning monster, monster stats, grab the struct, break it, and take the abilities class references array. We're going to take our ability number we're going to subtract one because this is an array. We have to go one off because it starts at zero. We're going to take that array, pass in the ability number in order to get a class reference. We're going to get the class defaults on that class. We're going to take the ability type off of it and do a switch. From here, we're going to split off into separate functions depending on what kind of an ability it is. 
We're not going to go through speed buff and speed debuff in this video. We'll do that another time. Let's take a look at damage first. I have a calculate health modifier function, which I pass in the float the modifier off of the class defaults. Here's the calculate health modifier function. We're going to grab our monster stats one more time. We're going to take the strength, multiply it by 0 0.092, whatever number you really want. And then we're going to multiply that by the modifier and pass it out as the damage. That damage comes out and we're gonna run the damage action on the battle component. Here's the damage action function. It takes in the base damage float. We're going to get a validated check on the target monster to make sure it really exists and it's not a null pointer. I have a print string for debug purposes called applying damage so I can see this. We're then gonna call apply damage. This is a built-in uh, gameplay statics function. We're gonna pass in the damaged actor, which is the target monster. The damage causer is our owning monster, and damage type class is not used yet. I haven't done anything, but I did drag off of this and I promoted it to a variable just in case we do something in the future with that. Once the damage has been applied, we're going to grab our game mode battle, the battle widget off of it, the UI battle text off the battle widget, the battle text off of the battle text, and then we're going to set text. We're going to format text pass that in and we're going to do name is attacking and name is going to come from the owning monster its stats the monster name pass that in that's how we run the damage action health is pretty much similar except what we're doing is we're just multiplying by a negative one so that the damage is inverted and we're applying a negative damage so we're healing Health modifier, exactly the same. You can change the float here to whatever you want again. And run healing action takes in the base damage, and it is also identical. Base damage goes into an applying damage, but it, because it's negative, we're healing. And then I just have a different text over here that says name healed itself. Over on the BP monster, in order for the damage and the healing to actually take place, we have to implement event any damage. Any damage, I've got a debug string here, and I print out just any damage called. We're going to take the damage, we're going to get the monster stats, break it, grab health, we'll illuminate the little tube right here. We're going to take the health and minus the damage from it, and we're going to truncate that float, take the return value, pass it into a clamp, the value, minimum is zero, maximum is going to be our monster stats max health. Pass that in. Next, we need to save everything in the struct, but modify the current health. So we're going to take the monster stats and this time set the struct, pass every single thing from the previous struct to the new struct, and then pass the clamped integer return value, pass that into the monster stats health. And that way, when we do event any damage, we don't lose any of the stats previously, but we're modifying the health. And when the damage is negative, we're subtracting a negative value, so we're going to be adding health. And that is how we run damage and healing for the start turn. And that's it. Start turn ends. We go and remove from the turn stack, and then we change turn and call turn ended. With that in place, the AI now chooses its uh, attacks and its abilities from its ability array. And now the battle logic actually will work with the AI choosing its abilities right here and healing and attacking. And now with all that set up, we can go check out a battle. So I'm gonna hit play, enter into a battle. Wild placeholder appears. It appears to be our turn first, choose an action. I know ability one is damage. I've attacked. There's a pause. A speed debuff was applied. We didn't do that in this in this video though. Mr. Smiles attacked, see? And some health chiseled away. Now it's our turn, I'm gonna heal. Rufus healed itself. New round, whose turn is it first? Mr. Smiles, Mr. Smiles healed himself. We're gonna go ahead and attack. And I've won. New round pops up just because of a bug but new round, you won. There's some bugs still involved, such as new round is still called, but as you can see, it pauses itself after everything has been done and it runs out. So there you have it. That's how you put together a battle mode. 
everything has been implemented and you can run through a battle. Uh, I'm going to try and work out some bugs, polish things, and add some more features. But until next time, find something in the world to make you smile.